A. In this video, I'm going to go over the implementation of support vector machine with SMO. So sequential minimal optimization is an algorithm that works by breaking down the dual form of the SVM optimization problem into many smaller optimization problems that are easier to solve. And it works like this. Uh, we select um, some pair of alpha i and alpha j to optimize while holding all the other alpha values constant. After optimizing those two, we choose and optimize another pair of values and keep doing that until convergence. Um, what we want is to find a vector alpha with values that are mostly zeros, except where the corresponding training example is closest to the decision boundary. So they are like the support vectors. So let's see the class implementation for SVM. The initial function gets a maximum iteration, uh, kernel type, and C parameter, and an epsilon. Then we set the kernel function according to the parameter the user set um, and the rest of the parameters. And we also set the weights and bias to be none for now. Uh, then uh, we have three kernels functions that we can use. So we can solve also nonlinear problems. We've got linear kernel, um, which is a simple dot product between uh, two vectors, uh, quadratic kernel that is yet again a dot product but between two vectors but powered by two, and RBF kernel, which is the most popular kernel in support vector machine. Uh, but uh, when it comes to choosing a kernel, always start with linear kernel because it's much faster and can give great results in many cases, especially in data sets with large amount of features. Um, yeah, so then we have a function that returns a random number between the range A and B, excluding Z, uh, which we are going to use later. Then we have functions to calculate uh, the weights and the bias, and another function E uh, to calculate the prediction error. So now this function is to calculate the bounds for alpha j according to the two constraints of the objective function. So if uh, yi is not equal to yj, then the value must be um, between zero or alpha j minus alpha i, whichever is a maximum and uh, C or C minus alpha I plus J, alpha J, whichever is the minimum. Uh, otherwise it's going to be zero or alpha I plus alpha J minus C and uh, C or alpha I plus alpha J, whichever is the minimum. Okay, now let's go over the feed function. As I said before, our goal is to find a vector of optimized alpha values. So first we initial uh, parameters n and d to be uh, the dimension of the data set and alpha vector um, to be all zeros for, for now. Then we iterate over the data. Uh, so there are a few uh, heuristics that you can use for choosing alpha i and alpha j. I chose a basic heuristic for both of them. 
and which is like go over all the observation in the data set and choose a random alpha to optimize. So for each J, I choose a random I that is not J and is between the range of zero and N minus one. Then we calculate the second derivative of the objective function along the diagonal line. You can see that I used the kernel function here each time there is a multiplication between two vectors. Now, if the result is smaller than zero or equal to zero, there is nothing to optimize and we move on to another pair of alpha. Uh, if not, we continue. So then we store the current uh, values of alpha i and alpha j and we calculate the bounds for alpha j. So for, for that, we send the original value of alpha i and alpha j. Then we compute the model's parameters and the error uh, for observations i and j. So now we set the new alpha values simultaneously. So alpha j is now uh, the original alpha j plus the label uh, of observation j that will indicate the sign multiplied by uh, the subscription between uh, arrow i and arrow j that we found earlier divided by the second derivative of the objective function. Uh, so now we need to check if the new alpha j value fulfill the constraints. If not, we need to clip its value to be in the boundaries we found before. After that, we can calculate alpha i, uh, which is the original value of alpha i plus y i multiplied by y j. Again, that will indicate the sign and multiplied by the subtraction uh, between the old alpha j value and its new clipped value. And then after each iteration, we check if there is a difference between um, previous alpha and the current. If the change is smaller than uh, epsilon, we stop because we found our support vectors. Otherwise, we keep going until convergence. Um, finally, when it stops, we calculate the model's parameters, W and B, and we can also return the support vectors from the data sets. Um, I also added uh, a predict function. So as you can see, the prediction will be the sign of the dot product of the feature vector and the weights that we found plus B. Uh, then you can train this model uh, on your data set and play with the parameters until you get uh, good results. Uh, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.